Kalima uh, Energy uh, and presented by Mark Freeman. Thanks, Mark. Excellent. Thanks, everybody. I really appreciate you all taking some time to have a listen. Uh, we're an oil and gas story coming out of Canada. Um, I'm going to quickly run you through the company. We listed both on the ASX as well as on the OTC market. Uh, our market cap is sitting at around about 70 million, and we have around about 600 million shares on issue. Most importantly, our production last year generated revenue of 122 million Aussie. Our earnings was 66 million before interest tax depreciation and other adjustments. We have an impressive growth production base. We're up 60% in our production since we secured our main producing assets two years ago. And our forecasted production for Q1 of 2023 is 4,370 barrels per day. Notwithstanding that, we currently have achieved 4,500 barrels a day up to date, year to date. The company has three main assets. The first two are our producing assets. They're very close to Calgary in Alberta. We have our Brooks asset. Last year, it was one of our main um, <coughs> activity location. We drilled 16 wells at Brooks. All of those wells were successfully placed on production. Um, the beauty of North America, as, as David's pointed out, is your ability to actually drill, get on production relatively quickly. So with the way that we have our um, development campaign structured, we typically will find our sunburst wells, which are our standard conventional wells, will get on production within 30 days of drilling. Um, <clears throat> in addition, we have our Thorsby region, that Thorsby produces around about 30 to 40 percent of our production revenue. And outside of that, we have our Montney. Now, Montney has been with the company for the last five years. It is a massive basin in North America. The Montney Basin produces around about 10 billion cubic feet of gas per day. Most importantly, on this slide, I'm going to point you to the direction of LNG Canada. LNG Canada is a $40 billion LNG terminal that's currently being built. It's predominantly being funded by Shell and Petronas. What that does to the Canadian market is it provides an exit for that gas that's currently being sold into North America. And it's being sold into North America at a significant discount to what gas is being purchased for on Henry Hub, which is the, the pricing that the Americans sell their gas at. So what this will provide is an exit for the gas out of Canada to LNG, and what we're expecting is that the Canadian gas price will equalise with the American gas prices. This is our production story, as you can see. Apologies. Total, total volume of sales was 1.4 million barrels of oil equivalent last calendar year. We have sales for the current quarter of about just, just shy of 400,000 barrels of oil, and that's 65% oil. The slide to the right runs through our, <coughs> our growth strategy, well, our growth over the last two years. It's, it's been a, a significant capital expenditure to get us to this point. We've more than doubled production, and that has required some capital expenditure. So last year, total capital cost was about $48 million. Most of that capital was spent in drilling wells. As I mentioned, we had 17 wells that were drilled and completed last calendar year. Um, but we, in addition to that, we, we increased our capital spend in relation to our pipeline network, uh, which has been a significant benefit to the company um, with respect to our Brooks region. I'll run you through a bit of that later on. Oops, go back. This slide shows how we compare to our, to our peers in Canada, both on an EV to production basis and an EV to 2P basis. And what we found is that whilst we're producing close to 5,000 barrels of oil per day equivalent, which is a significant amount of production in Australia, we don't get the same value recognition that, that uh, happens in Canada, so, which means that Essentially, the company's assets are somewhat of a target from a Canadian perspective. 
What we've focused on is having a Canadian team drive the development of the project. So whilst it's an Australian listed company, I'm based in Australia and my counterpart Glenn Whitten, our chairman's based in Australia, the rest of the team is all Canadian based. So everyone lives and works in Calgary, they're 100% focused on the company and developing its assets and they've all done a phenomenal job in getting this production level up. Our Brooks region produces around about 60% of our production. As I mentioned, most of our activity last calendar year was drilling in Brooks, and we built our pipeline. What, what that pipeline has done is it's enabled us to do that big development campaign without having to spend significant capital in stripping out liquids and gas where we drill our wells. So we can drill the wells and then we can take all that production emulsion and push it to our battery. And our battery will strip it out and will separate the gas, the oil and the water, re-inject the water, sell the gas to, on the pipeline and then we sell our oil by the barrel. And that gets picked up and every day we have trucks coming through, pick up the oil and take it away. From a risk perspective, our 1P reserves at Brooks is about 8 million barrels and 2P is at 10 million barrels. We have over 140 locations to drill, so plenty of drilling locations, relatively low cost drilling. I'll run you through, this is a, an image of some of our facilities. One of the problems in Canada is you, you typically find people produce a lot of sulphur. We have our own proprietary sulphur extraction plant, which is very low cost. It comes in at about 40 cents an MCF for us to utilise it, and it produces a sulphur product that can then be put into landfill or ultimately sold and refined as sulphur. In addition, what we find with our economics is relatively low cost wells. Um, we've got two different types of wells on, in the Brooks region. One of them is the sunburst, which is a straight conventional play, which means you don't have to stimulate it. You drill a well, it takes you about 10 days to drill. You put it on production, a bit of flow back, and within 30 days you're producing. And you get paid one month after that, after that production commences. In addition, we have our glorkinetic wells, which do require some stimulation. And those wells, again, are relatively same sort of drill time. They just take a little bit longer to get on production, and you need to flow back the wells and clean them up a little bit longer. But all in all, it's 30 to 60 days to get, get into production. Most importantly, um, relatively low break-even costs, and that's a whole of well cost down the bottom. So $53 per barrel on our glorkinetic and $40 a barrel on our sunburst. So the sunburst wells cost us around about 1.3 million per well. They pay back within 10 to 12 months, sometimes sooner, sometimes a little bit longer. On balance, our sunburst wells, we call them our Gemini wells, have pretty much performed based on our curve, our standard curve. The glorkinetic wells have all performed above our curve, which has been really good for us. So these wells are a little bit more expensive, um, they come on a bit stronger, and, uh, and all of them have um, performed above expectations. The next region is our Thorsby region. Again, we have a significant land holding. There's 15 wells on production there. We produce around about 1,100 barrels of oil with 70 net locations. Again, it represents a 2P reserve of about 10 million barrels of oil. Um, these images show what it looks like when you're drilling and completing in the Thorsby field. It does require a stimulation exercise. What, we, what we're seeing at Thorsby is our break-even costs, full well cost is about $40 per barrel. When I say full cost, that includes the capital cost. Our operating costs are around about $20 per barrel Canadian, and that doesn't include our royalties, which is based on a percentage of 19 to 20% of total revenue. The third asset that we have isn't in production right now, but it is the biggest upside asset for our shareholders. It's called the Montney. We call it the sleeping giant. Um, the company has one of the last independent positions up in northeast BC. Um, most of the players around us have been acquired. 
A company by the name of Tourmaline has grown from being a $2 billion company to a $28 billion company over the last four to five years. Uh, they've acquired pretty much everybody around us, in addition to CNRL, which is one of the largest Canadian producers, as well as ConocoPhillips. So what we've seen is over 8 to $10 billion of acquisitions within our region. What we have is 34,000 acres. We have two wells that were drilled and tested, and we went back recently, last month, and we did an additional test program because we needed to. And those, those wells have generated a contingent resource of around 160 million barrels of oil equivalent. And when you break it down, you, you get a category called development pending. Development pending means that once you get finance in place, you can convert that into a reserve. So it's a very high, low risk category. And in addition to that, we have our prospective resources of 126 million barrels. Most importantly, uh, whilst we are up in the northeast of British Columbia, what we did was secure all of the uh, facilities to the north of us. A company by the name of Enerplus is one of the largest energy producers in Canada. They've moved a lot of their activity into, into North America now. They had a massive field to the north called Tommy Lakes, and they were producing for about 12 years from an interval higher up than the Montney. The facilities were going to be um, plugged and abandoned and reclaimed, and we secured them essentially for a dollar. And that replacement cost is about $85 million. Notwithstanding, you would have to go through a substantial permitting process. The only thing we need to do to get wells on production is to connect a pipeline from where our well pad is to the facilities, to which is around about 20 kilometres, which will give us an 8 to 10 inch pipeline, which would then enable us to produce between, um, I think it's 8 to 10 million, no, sorry, 50 to 100 million cubic feet per, per day. So quite a substantial resource. And one of the issues that we had is when we drilled and tested these wells, um, Unfortunately, in Canada, when you drill in, in this location, you're drilling in the winter and you're drilling on ice roads. And, and what happened was we were able to drill the wells. We got the wells onto testing in 2019. We didn't have enough time and the roads started to melt and they wouldn't be able to get the equipment out. So fortunately, um, some ice roads have to get put in every year by our partners. We've got Petronas up there and they built up the, pop, the, 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 ent the entrance um, road and we were able to piggyback off that and we had a testing program that we'd anticipated to budget about 2.9 million. We ended up spending around about 1.8 million and through this testing program we also sold about $600,000 worth of condensate. But most importantly, so that the test cost was relatively low in that sense, most importantly what we determined was our middle Montney was producing condensate yields substantially higher than during our initial test campaign. And it took the condensate from around about uh, 25 of free uh, condensate per million up to um, a day rate of 400 barrels a day, which is essentially eight times what we originally tested it at. And the most important thing about these wells is you're producing two main streams, and it does break down into NGLs later on, but you're producing gas and you're producing a condensate, and it's a very light oil, and this condensate sells at a premium to WTI. So you're getting about six dollars, four to six dollars extra per barrel. So the condensate yield is critical to the production. It substantially increases the economic recovery. In addition to that, you've got a wet gas that gets sold into through your pipeline. It gets stripped out, and at that point, they'll take out additional NGLs, which adds another 25 to 50 barrels a day in addition. So that forms part of the 3.4 million cubic feet a day. Most importantly, we tested two intervals, which is our middle Montney and our upper Montney. Our upper Montney didn't yield as much condensate, which is both a negative and a positive because of the seasonal nature of the Canadian gas prices. What we see is during winter, the gas prices will go above six to seven dollars an MCF, and in summer they'll they'll drop back down. What I mentioned earlier on in the presentation was we we're expecting. 
those prices to sort of level out again with Henry Hub as LNG Canada comes on stream and starts to remove the demand out of the supply curve. So our expectations with respect to the upper money is that when we see a spike in the, in the gas price, we can actually flow our upper monthly wells at a higher rate and generate additional gas supply. So hopefully, oh, I am over time, my apologies. Um, so just in summary, we have a de-risk asset base. Uh, we're expecting revenue this year of about 100 million, earnings of 50 to about $50 million. We, our shareholder returns, I haven't mentioned, we actually did a distribution back to shareholders last September. Two and a half million dollars went back in addition to a acquisition of some shares. And finally, we have our upside in our money asset. Thanks everyone for your time.